Uh, and we look at a bigger and bigger you know, picture of, of that and look at the two side by side, they're, they're identical. The, the shapes, the form is identical, like the form of that, that biggest toroid that we see in the cosmic microwave background radiation is the same toroidal shape that we have in the heart's magnetic field of the body. And, and, the, and the axis, the polar axis of the toroid, uh, like the spine, relates to the axis of rotation of the, of the galaxy, where we see these jets of superluminal energy coming out beyond the speed of light. Well, that's not even possible, and so we have to, you know, think beyond beyond the relativity initial thoughts of relativity that say, well, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, and now we're aware that things do, and we figure out, well, how can that be? And it's figuring out, well, how can that be from that perspective? Again, it's it's proving that that perspective is a perspective on something that's true. It doesn't mean that our model is accounting for everything in it. When we say, well, there's 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 no medium. There's nothing. There's nothing that carries the wave of of electromagnetism or gravity in space. There is no ether. Well, we never proved that there was no ether. We only found a way to symbolize our understanding and our perception without that, because it's such a fine substrate we can't we can't touch it. We can't sense it directly. We can't measure it directly. But we can certainly indirectly measure the Planck size, which is a size in time and space and energy. So there's this unit, well, what's that? So I, to me, that's a great model for that's the substrate. Doesn't mean it's, it's a thing any more than this is a thing, or any less than it. These are things. What, what is a Planck? Planck is the smallest unit of space, time, and energy that modern physics uh, can conceptualize, can measure, can we can come up with a number on it. It's like, okay, there's the anything smaller than that has no, no meaning to us. And if we go to the the biggest thing, the 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 cosmic microwave background radiation, the, the big the whole universe as a whole, so it's the biggest and the smallest that we can conceive of. And we're trying to transcend that with different models that maybe that we can conceive of more. Certainly mentally mentally we can, like I say if we can conceive of an infinite fractal, you know, that, but uh, in any case, of those that we can measure, uh, observe through technology, that are the exact geometric center of those frequencies is our, the center of our brain waves, the alpha rhythm, which happens to be a sanctuary space between two bands, the two lowest bands of the Schumann resonance. Well, it, it's saying, gee, we're in the center of the world that we see. Just as the ancients said not till not too long ago, gee, the earth is in the center of the universe. Well, it still is. The sun still comes up and goes down. We don't say, oh, the earth's turning. We say the sun's coming up <laughs> because it's what we see. And same, if we go to act on that world, we have to act from our center. You know, if we want to act properly and not do damage, we have to act from the heart. It's our center. We, we, if we want to reach the heavens, we have to use equations that are geocentric, that are centered on our frame of, our inertial frame of reference on gravity. We can't say, well, we know now that the sun's, oh wait, do we still know that the sun's the center of the universe? No, no, the sun's not, it's the galactic center. Oh wait, it's not that, it's the center of our supergalactic cluster. Oh, maybe it's the center of the void between this supergalactic cluster and this other wall of supergalactic clusters over here. Oh wait, maybe it's the center, of, you know, this center over here where there's a, a stronger clustering of galaxies. You know, it, it's, it, but it's all scalable and if we can understand the relationships from one scale to another, it can give us tremendous insights that, that oh, the sun is like a proton. Oh, the earth is like an electron. Well, it's negatively charged. And when we're connected to it, instead of being a capacitor and separate, we're, we are connected to the whole. We're connected to each other through it. It's our main source of antioxidants. 
electrons are the ultimate anti antioxidant. An antioxidant is defined as a, an electron donor. What, who, who better to donate an electron than itself? Right? It's the perfect. It, it's so perfect that when we use those Earth electrons as our antioxidants, we don't use up our vitamin C, our vitamin A, our vitamin E, or etc. Our nutritional antioxidants get used up when they're antioxidants, and they're no longer any good as coenzymes. We have to eliminate them. That's more work for the kidneys. So, um, so it's my hypothesis that when we when we pass the condensates, the spirit minerals, I like to call them, uh, through the heart, they experience our heart field. If our heart field is coherent, which means we're relaxed, we live in a culture that's not relaxed. So there's, there's a clue of where we need to go. Notice the breath. Notice the things that make you unconsciously, automatically take in a deep breath and feel, oh, relaxed, relieved, right? How do you spell relief? It's not a drug. <laughs> it's not even a, a calcium, you know, aluminum supplement or something like that. Uh, these are superconducting minerals, so when, we, when they experience something that's stressed, they just tune it out. They shut it out. They move away. They go away. They go out, out of food when we cook it on, on a, an electric stove. From my research, I believe that if we could run that stove, and the reason we shouldn't be able to, on a 172 hertz frequency instead of a 50 or 60 hertz frequency, that we'd actually attract more life energy, more spirit minerals into our food as we cook it. Uh, and it would create that more spiritual sanctuary environment in the whole kitchen. So, uh, so if we're in coherence, we breathe in the minerals on a 10 second breath cycle, our body will automatically do that. If we get close to that, it locks into a 10 second cycle, which locks into a one second cycle in the heart and, and into uh, 10 times, a 10 hertz, 10 times a second cycle in the muscles and brain is our alpha rhythm. And then we're all synced up, all working together. The heart is that central coordinator, and they understood this in, in the five element model. So we then send that spirit, that, that claimed spirit is now ours, it's the Po spirit, but it's no longer just the Po of the lungs, it's now the Shen of the heart, the, the spirit, the consciousness. We see it in people's eyes. If somebody is a living spiritual being, a viable cell in God's body, we see the life in their eyes. And if they're not, we don't. We can see the difference. Uh, so it goes from the heart to every organ. The, the, the next stop in the spiritual development is the earth element, the digestion, how we digest the, the, what comes in with, along with the breath in the metal element is our senses. I call it the sensorium. It's, what is the sensorium? It's, it's everything outside of ourselves, right up to our skin. We feel, we hear, we see all of space. We see the stars. They're in our sensorium. It's not internal, it's external. And how do we know it? It comes to us, to our surface, surface sensors, special senses, eyes and ears, touch, smell, taste. And that surface acts as a holographic sheet, a holographic plane. So what we experience as all of space outside of us is that energy that comes from that space and meets our surface and we process it in special ways to, to gain certain windows, like the visual window on a certain octave of visible light. Interesting that that's the, the same octave of electromagnetic energy that the atoms of the atomic matter of our 
biological body that it's receptive to, that it's responsive to. The eyes of the proton, the electron, are tuned to that frequency as well in the atomic matter. So, uh, so we take in the sensorial information to form a holographic image of it. That's our, our sensation, our awareness, what we're attending to beyond ourselves. In the heart, the heart is the center of our internal milieu, our emotional self, which is in our internal state of coherence, we can feel the emotion, the electrical motion, the energetic motion in that in that space of self. We we feel we can feel sad or depressed, and there's a downward movement of that center. There's a a, a, a decrease in the spaciousness of that consciousness within us. There's there can be an, an upward movement and a decrease in the spaciousness when we worry projecting, thinking about the future, or we're sad, we're thinking about the past, we're limiting ourselves to connecting with only certain trans-temporal uh, photonic wormholes of our, of our potential. Come back to the heart, and we can integrate that. It can be, it's part of us. When, when we're feeling sadness, but in the context of love, I'm so sad, uh, I feel the sadness of, of the lack of, of presence, of, of physical presence, of touch, of closeness to my mother, to my father. But when I'm in my heart feeling that and knowing that they're transcendent beings, that they are here now through their own ability to generate these wormholes of consciousness, you know, they're in the future space relative to me. That's where relativity comes in. It's like, so I can imagine them. And now they're here for me. I was already here for them. Now I'm now they're here for me. And the sadness is in that context. It's integrated. It's part it strengthens me. They're part of me. I'm no longer feeling separate from them. The separation happens here in my heart. Or the connection. And that's how the Oriental view views the five elements of the consciousness. The heart is the integrator. It's what pulls it all together, the connector. So with, with the, uh, the, the earth element, we conventionally think of it as we're digesting our food, we're separating the good and the bad, we're absorbing the good, we're eliminating the bad. Same with thoughts. It's, it's, we can ruminate on thoughts. We, we think about something, we're digesting it. We're gaining the knowledge that we can out of it, and we're letting go of that which is without meaning, without life, keeping the living. And, and so from there, we go to action, will, which is governed by the kidneys. The, the uh, memory and will and action is, is the water element, which also governs the, the brain, the nervous system, in oriental medicine. Uh, and, and, and the final step before we complete the cycle and return back to the metal element of the lungs is the liver, the wood element, which is associated with the eyes, with vision. Vision is our feedback. When we take action through our will out into this sensorial world, like the two cats, like the cat that could interact and see the feedback, develop vision. Not, the other one had sight, but it was functionally blind. It couldn't do anything with that sight. It, it, and and the, the, the neurons in the, in the brain, in the cortex, in the visual cortex, didn't develop the connections that they would need to in order to act upon that, to gain understanding. So it, uh, the object of vision is developing this ability to transcend, to see not only the past visual memory, but into the future, visualization. Uh, it's creative. It's our way of tapping into that future space where time is not the limiting factor, where there's multiple timelines that are possible and we have the free will to take action to choose. Uh, as St. Thomas Aquinas said some uh, maybe 600 years ago, 700 years ago, the, 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 the purpose of proper nutrition is to, to, uh, to feed, to nourish the, the sense the sense organs, 
so that we can gain experience and through that become freed to choose. Wow, he said a mouthful. I think we can learn a lot from the wisdom of the past, of all the traditions, and by synthesizing and integrating that into a clinical, practical model, come up with new solutions, not only for individual issues that we may have, but, but a meta model that gives us the ability to step out of our, our, our cultural blindness, of really a culture of death, when we begin to see it from the outside, of, of, of how we treat ourselves medically, how we treat problems in the environment, how we treat each other, you know, the, the issues of war and, and famine and uh, uh, all these, you know, great problems of our age where more humans have been killed by our governments than all human deaths throughout geological history by, you know, estimate, by calculation. It's time to overcome that, accept the truth of we all have the same government. It's fractal. It's within us. Heaven is a hand. It's inside. And it's inside you. How can I be more like uh, Mother Teresa who sees Jesus in that dying person on the street who, you know, smells horrible, looks like death, and, you know, no one wants to get near and touch only by seeing ourselves in God and seeing God in that other can we become one, can we become a model of the Holy Spirit, a, 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 a unity. Try unity. <laughs>